admonition the twelfth. A calling is a calling. Once we had finished our initial circumlocation of the building, we entered the courtyard which enclosed the front of the house. At the far end of this enclosure, past the lock side door to what we were to learn was called Grant's Cottage, and the gable end, adorned with coat of arms, was the large turret which stood as connection between house and castle. A small door opened at the foot, and we had ventured in. A turnpike staircase rose to first, then second storey, and at the first storey landing we took the opportunity to look into the ruin of the castle and the staircase. From there, having contemplated both my promise and the gorgeous ruin of the staircase, we explored the old house. With four main apartments on each of the three storeys, this was not a small dwelling either, nor would it be an easy restoration. We climbed the attic level to inspect the roof and found, like every other level of the house, a central broad corridor, the floorboards bowing up in the middle by a couple of centimetres. We noted the dust-encrusted former bedrooms, the woodworm in the exposed oak, jo oak joists of the roof, the rotting tongue and groove boards in all of the rooms, and backed out quietly and carefully. The first story had fared better, and we were able to access laundry, double aspect study, and a blue bedroom with French windows relatively safely. The ceiling of the bathroom, however, was decidedly rotten, with ceiling rafters and slate all sliding gracelessly into the tub. All the wood was desiccated, and some of it showed the thick grey cobweb of dry rot fungus. These webs extended into the gaps of the roof and gave us an indication, as if we needed it, as to why the roof was starting to show serious signs of decay. And it was in the bathroom that we found our first bright orange fruiting bodies. Our noses thick with the close, dank stink of decaying timber, we returned to the sanctuary of the stone-built turnpike to see if we could access the ground floor. Entry was via a long central corridor of the entire building. It ran at right angles to the castle's front door, providing ground floor access to all parts of the structure. Stepping into this long, narrow and very dark space felt like entering the alien mothership in the eponymous movie. And while we weren't wearing breathing apparatus, we felt we needed to with the heavy dusting of orange dry rot spores on every surface. With the windows boarded up and only a small keyring torch available to us, we backed out, not daring to trust the house's structure, our footing or sense of direction. I remember standing in the courtyard, looking up at the magnificent ruin with my arm around Sadie. She said, well, it feels like it needs us. Us, in particular? Oh, definitely. Not developers, not holiday homers. Not retirees, it needs us, people who will stay, who will live with it, work on it, love it. Ah, I exclaimed, the L word. Not, no going back then, no travelling down the road a few miles and thinking, what were we thinking? No, Charlie, I can see us here, can't you? Yes, but it's intimidating, probably very expensive, definitely long term. But I don't know, I, I'd have to say I'm already hooked. Line and sinker are gone too. What? Sadie looked up at me, her eyes clouded uh, for an instant. Oh, I see. Yes. So, that's decided then. Was on the bridge, really. You too. Yep. We left after an hour of exploring, intent on food and getting to the ferry, the next decade or so of our lives determined, or so we thought. The fates had some doubt as to that. But fate had rarely met with will so strong and obstinate as those of the people who were now involved.